In this video, we're going to show an example of a price leadership model, basically an oligopoly setup wherein you have a price leader and a price follower. The leader sets the price and the follower takes the price of the leader as given. So here we have our example in the slides. So you have your demand function. So we don't need to convert this into an inverse demand function as you will see later. So this is your industry demand function. And for now, let's assume that you have two separate cost functions, one for the leader, just uh, given by C1, X1, and then you have the cost function of the follower, which is C2, X2. Now, the, the peculiar thing about price leadership models is that you start off by solving for the optimal price of the follower. So it's not the other way around. We know, in principle, the leader sets the price, but in solving for the optimum price level in this model, you start off by solving for the uh, followers optimum right as you will see uh, as, as you will see in the following steps so let's set up this uh, profit function for the followers first. so solve we solve for solve for the followers price first right. because it's easier because the follower will just take the price as given so the profit function of the follower let's just denote it as phi 2 it's gonna be p star times x 2 minus c 2 x 2 now you may you, you may again ask why why are we setting p star as if it's given well remember that this is a price leadership model so whatever uh, the leader sets, the follower will take it as given. Right? So to expand this, you'll have P star, P star x2 minus, and you have x2 squared over 2. Let's just copy this. Right? Let's copy this here. Okay. Now, of course, basic optimization techniques, let me just... Uh, delete this, or maybe you can just um, enter it here. So basically, you take the derivative, the derivative of. Well, let's kind of put this at the center. Let's center this equation. So here you have. We have d d pi. Since this is just a function of x, two, we'll just use d pi two over d x two. That's going to be equal to. So, like in your perfectly competitive markets, you have e e star minus uh, the derivative of x squared over 2 is just x squared, x2, set it equal to 0. And therefore, the price function for x2, and the price of the price of uh, price function, price function for firm 2 is equal to e star x2. Now, how are we going to solve the price for the leader? Since the leader knows, basically the leader knows that the follower will set x to conditional on or will set x to based on the price p star that it set. We know that the follower's price, where the follower's demand function is already at x2. Now, when the flip or when the, when the follower captures this uh, quantity, the leader is left with the following demand function. So, we're going to solve first for the leader's demand function, or what we call the residual, the leader's residual demand. Okay, so the leader's residual demand would be equal to QP. Or well, we can specify it as Q1 already, because this is just the residual. So this is Q1, or for, 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 for clarity, let's just say X1. P. 
u1 is basically x1p and that's um, equal to a minus bp minus p star. Yep. This p star is this p star is term two price. <laughs> right. And this becomes a <clears throat> A minus B plus one P. Right. Now, since our cost function, if you recall, our cost function for the firm is C X one. It's in terms of quantity. We'll have to convert it in terms of quantity as well. So we'll need to get the inverse demand function. So the inverse demand function for firm one becomes um, P star. It's basically P star. P star of x1 is going to be, we'll move, this, move, we'll move this on the other side, we'll move this on the other side, so you have a, a minus x1 all over b plus 1. And so this is your inverse demand function. You can distribute this b plus 1 if you're more comfortable doing so, but for the sake of um, derivation, I think this is easier. Right? Or you can just follow what's in the slides. So basically the profit function now for firm 1 is equal to this inverse demand function. So that's a minus x1. Let's just copy this. Oops. A x1 times x1. So this is your revenue. This is your revenue minus the firm's cost. Right. So let's just move this up forward. Let's just move this up. Right. So getting the deriv derivative. Let's d pi 1 over sorry d x1 is going to be equal to a we have another fraction, so that's a over b plus 1 minus uh, 2, sorry, 2 over b plus 1, because you have x squared, but you're left with another x1 here, <laughs> minus c equals 0. Alright, so we move 2x1 on the other side, so you have a minus c on the left. So this, this is going to be um, 2 over d plus 1, x1 equals a minus all right, uh, a and of another fraction, so a over b plus 1 minus c. Right. So dividing both sides by 2 over b plus 1. Let's delete this. Let's delete this. Um, I'll just press enter from um, automatically resize. It's, yeah, it's going to resize. So it's going to be x1 star. Sorry. x1 is equal to um, a over 2. over 2 minus. C B plus one over two or well to simplify you have A A minus C B plus one over two. It's just a matter of plugging. It's just a matter of plugging this 
optimal output for the leader back to his residual demand function. And so let's have a new let's duplicate this slide. So this is your this is your inverse demand function. Let's delete this. <coughs> inverse this is your demand so this is your optimum quantity now plugging this back in your price function the price function for the leader so you take a minus sorry let's look back at our price so this is your inverse uh, this is your in inverse demand function or the residual demand function for the leader so it's gonna be a That's a minus x1. Let's just copy this. It's a minus x1 over b plus 1. So if I'm going to plug this back here, um, it's going to be equal to <clears throat> maybe, you can just, maybe we can distribute this to make it easier. So you have another fraction here, a over b plus 1 minus and another fraction another fraction here one over b plus one and then you plug this x1 here so you have a um you have a minus c b plus one over Two. Now you can cancel this two terms out, right? You can cancel these two terms out, and you're left with another p star, <clears throat> and left with another fraction. So this is a. Right? This stays, right? So a b plus one minus a minus uh no, you, of course, you cannot cancel this out yet, but um, you have A over 2, two B is 1 minus, that's when you can cancel. Right? So you have another fraction. So this becomes 2C. Or this becomes plus plus 2C. Or plus C over 2. Plus C over 2. So it's just a matter of combining terms. This becomes P star equals the denominator, common denominator would be 2 b plus 1. Right? So this becomes 2a, right? Because of the first term, 2b plus 1 divided by b plus 1 times 2 becomes 2a. And here, we still have a, right? 2b plus 1, 1a. One, and then you have c, b plus 1. And therefore, the optimum price, optimum price for the leader at, at for or basically for both terms is a plus c b plus one over two b plus one. So basically, this is your optimum or optimal price that will be set by the leader, which will be adopted by the follower. But for this model, only particularly interesting result would be the output of um, the leader, which is uh, this, and the output of um, the follower. In the case of the follower, we saw earlier that whatever p is, whatever p star is, that would be his or her output. 
So as you can see, um, because of this v plus one, you could actually you could actually guess that the followers output is well to some extent much smaller, much smaller because of this v plus one. Although we have a negative term here. Now I'll leave it to it. I'll leave it as an exercise to determine what would be the industry's total uh, output. Actually, it's already in the slides. So you may just want to review it. Okay. So this is your result. 